Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Welcome to my video on dynamic named ranges in Microsoft Excel. So oftentimes when we're building a data set in counseling research, we want to monitor certain trends in the data as we add to the actual data set. So say, for example, we want to monitor the average value of a post-test. So you see I have here some fictitious data and one variable is the post test and we want to determine the average of all the values in post test of course it automatically displays down here we know it's 49.4 but say we set it up as a range so it would be average and then the range would be d2 to D15. And you see there's the average. Now if we added another record and say the value uh, was 43 to score, you can see this will not change because it's static. It's, it's just this area we defined initially, D2 through D15. Of course we can highlight the function and then expand the range, but we'd have to do that each time. And similarly, if we deleted values from the end, we would have to modify the range. So a dynamic named range takes care of this problem. It automatically adjusts the range based on the actual values in a particular column. So to build a dynamic named range, we go to the formulas ribbon and to the name manager. And you can see I've already defined three dynamic name ranges, one for gender, uh, one called group, which is column A, and post test, which is column D. And I'm going to add now age. So you select new and it asks you for name. I'll name this age and then where it says refers to here's we're going to put in the formula for the dynamic name range so we'll start with the equal sign then we'll go to the offset function that's the function we'll be using and the first value will be data exclamation mark which is this worksheet the one we're on and then dollar sign C, this makes it absolute column, and then dollar sign 2. So data C2, and that's absolute. And then for our row offset, it'll be 0. For our column offset, it'll be 0. And then for the height, we're going to nest another function. This is going to be count A. And again, it's going to be on the data worksheet. And it's going to be dollar sign C colon dollar sign C. So the entire, the entire column. We're going to close that parenthesis and then subtract 1. And then for the columns, column width, It'll just be one. So now you can see I've created this new dynamic name range uh, named age. And if you select it, down here you can see it contains all the values from C2 all the way down to C15. Now the reason I did it this way is because I don't want to include the actual variable name of age because of the type of calculations I'll be doing. But if you did want to include uh, from C1 all the way down to the last populated value in this column, you would simply change this value of C2 to C1 and then this negative 1, the minus 1 uh, after the count 
a function, you would delete that. So now we have a new dynamic named range named age, and we can treat it in the functions just like any other range. So for example, I could uh, average all the ages, and instead of having to uh, select the range, I can just simply type in age. You see it's automatically going to come up here because it's a dynamic name range. And you can see the average age for this data set is 61. Now if I add another age on, and of course you'd add the other um, variable values as well, but if I just put another age on here, say I put um, 55, you can see it's automatically going to update and just keep adding values and it's going to keep changing the size of the range. I don't have to redefine the range each time. It's automatically redefined. It's dynamically redefined. Hence the name dynamic name range. So I want to show you some useful functions that you can apply uh, using dynamic name ranges. So now that I've added the age dynamic name range, I have four. I have group, gender, age, and post-test. So let's take a, take a look at sum. So if you want to add, in this case, uh, post-test, you would simply use sum. And then post-test, you can see it comes up in the list. If you wanted to sum if the values in post-test were greater than 50, you would use the sumif function. Of course, the range would be post-test. And it would be quotation mark greater than 50, close quotation mark. It's 397. Or if we wanted all the values that were less than or equal to 50, again, it would be sum if, and this would be in the post test variable. And it would be quotation mark less than or equal to 50. And of course, these two values, as you can see, add up to 692, which we would expect, because that's all the values in that variable. So making it a little more complex, what if we want to sum the post-test values based on if a particular level of the group was indicated? So we want to sum all the post-test values for just the treatment group. You can do that with sum if. So it'd be sum if, and the range would be the first range here would be group. The criteria would be in quotes treatment, because we only want the treatment group. And then we'll have to add this optional argument of some range. And of course, that would be post-test. So now we see that only when the treatment is in the record will it include this value in the sum. So if I just highlight this region here, you see it's 342, which matches here. Then, of course, we have average, which I've covered before. That's very straightforward average, and in this case, post-test. We can also use average if. So if we wanted to average the post-test scores for females only, so in this, this variable here, zero uh, indicates male and one indicates female. That's how it's coded. So we would average if, and of course the range here would be gender, and the criteria would be quotation mark equal to 1, indicating a female participant, and the optional average range would be post-test, so the, the final score. So 
So the average post-test scores for the females only is 45.375. Now we've calculated the average, uh, which is the mean. We can also calculate the median. So if we wanted the median value for post-test, that would be median and post-test. Similarly, the mode. Uh, in this case, we just want one mode. So it'll be mode dot S and GL, mode single. And then post-test. We could also count the total number of values in, say, the group variable. So that would be count A and group. Or by using the count if function, we could count the number of participants in the control group. So that would be count if the range would be group and the criteria would be quotation mark control close quotation mark. So you see there's seven in the control group. And we could also find the lowest and highest value in any particular variable, in this case uh, post-test, so equals min or minimum post-test is 37 or max or maximum for the highest value post-test is 61. So if I were to add another record here, so I add a con another uh, participant to the control group and it was a male, let's say the age was 65 and the post-test score was 57. You can see all the, I'll delete these out, all the appropriate modifications were made to these uh, functions based on this record being added. Uh, this count if counted the control was 7 and now it's 8 because I've added a control. The score didn't affect the min max but it did change the uh, average. You can see that it didn't change the average if value because this was counting just females and I added a male participant. So if I were to add another participant, let's say it was a treatment group, made that female, let's say 64, let's say the score was 63, you can see now the max changed and the average if changed because this is for females, so the average um, went up and of course the overall average went up. So using dynamic name ranges is a great way to monitor data and work with data as you're adding new records into a data set. With dynamic name ranges it's unnecessary to continually update the ranges as Excel will update them for you. If you should no longer have use for a dynamic name range, you just go to the name manager and you can select any of the dynamic name ranges and simply delete them. It's worth noting here that in the name manager, uh, I've demonstrated dynamic name ranges but you could also create a range that's static. Defined names in Excel don't have to be dynamic name ranges. They can be simply named ranges. So say I wanted to create a static range that represents the output I have here. I would select New. Let's just call this Output. And where it says Refers to, I simply highlight this region and now I have a static range that refers to this output that I've created with the functions that are being used in the actual 
functions in column G. You see it appears here. So this is not a dynamic name range, it's a static range. But it has a name, so if we're going to reference it a lot, it might be easier to create a range, a static name range, rather than continually specifying the coordinates for the range inside the worksheet. So I hope you found this video on creating and using dynamic named ranges to be helpful. As always, if you have any questions or concerns, feel free to contact me. I'll be happy to assist you.